handicapper Steve here handicapping the racing from Longchamp Racecourse here on Sunday. It's the 1st of October 2023. It's Arc de Triomphe Day from Longchamp and I'm going to look at the Arc and all the other stakes races on the program. But before I get on to that, remember to please follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Kid 5 for more selections for race courses around the world and I mean it around the world. Uh, so we have a lot of stakes races to look at the group races. Races 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, and 7. The 4th is the Arc. Let's get to it right now starting off with the first race which is the group one pre jean luc lagardier stakes it's a group one event going for four hundred twenty five thousand dollar purse race for two olds here field of love and horses going the 1400 meter journey or seven furlongs on the turf course gonna take the one horse zabari as a top selection or zabiari as a top selection I'm going to go 1-8 in your forecast exacta. That's going to be the top two, and that's the way I'm going to give you my selections for today uh, for the Longchamp program. 1-8 forecast exacta. Top selection, one horse Zabari. Zero Colt by Witten Bassett. Uh, the Aga Khan owns this one. Jean-Claude Roger trains. Christian DeMiro gets the mount. The horse's most recent out came the local prep race for this one. 7th of September, a mile on yielding ground in the group uh, three pre Chinese stakes. On the very similar ground that you're going to facing today, he loved it. He quickened up nicely on the front end, winning by one quarter lengths. He went away with it that was a very good race stepping up to group quality horses gonna have to overcome wide poster here today but he likes the fast ground he's proven he could get the seven or the mile you know i, I think he's in a good spot to win to back an enlisted race at Stoville, one mile on the 17th of august he finished second by a neck that day and it just took a little bit time to get going but he settled well he quickened up a lot the winner had the jump on him but not a bad race for this horse there and then prior to it off a, off a little bit of refreshing of six weeks on the 9th of july Doville seven frongs in, in a conditions race he finished second by one quarter length that day the the winner uh Bovater, is running back in this one today but this horse it took him a little bit time to get going but he was staying the trip well you know he's definitely been improving with every single race like i said gonna have to overcome wide post but he could definitely win i think your second likeliest winner is the eight horse evade from uh, Gabriel Barcelona and andre farb most recently on the uh, 3rd of September over the 7 in the Prix de la Rochette, he finished second by a length beyond Beauvater that day. He really took off clear as your, you know, uh, uh, your favor in this one. This horse just kind of stalked him, and he needed something more, but he got around the race course decently. Uh, you know, prior to that at Deauville in the Prix Francois Botin, he finished fourth by 11 lengths that day, and I just don't think he had the easiest trips that day. He was a little lax a days ago, but he went going way on soft ground on the 9th of July at Deauville. Another horse, he's drawn well. He has some speed if he wants to use it up early on. I'll give him a shot on the ticket uh, in this very wide opener from uh, Paris Longchamp. But to recap my selection for the first from Longchamp, it's the group one. Pre Jean Luc Legardier. Gonna take the one horse Zambiari. Give kudos to the eight horse here. Evade. One eight forecast exacta. Let's use them both in the multi race. Let's get to the second event from Longchamp, which is the group one. Pre Marcel Boussac stakes. It's group one event going for a purse $425,000. Race for two year old fillies here. We have a field of 10 of them going the distance of ground of 1,600 meters or a mile on the Doville, or excuse me, a mile over the Long Trump turf course. Um, before we go any further, this ground today will be the fastest ground they've seen at, at Longchamp uh, for Arc Day in many, many years. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, just keep that in mind. Usually it's soft this time of year, uh, but this year it's quite firm, uh, you know. So, you know, that's something to keep an eye out. And uh, if you follow turf tracks on the um, on Twitter, um, they have an interesting article about the way they say their goings in France because, you know, a heavy in France is not... Not the same as a heavy in the UK or firm or, or a soft in, in the UK and a soft in France and even here in America is completely different than what they do in uh, in France. So uh, they might say soft ground. It's more towards the uh, the good to firm going that you see today. Uh, so uh, just keep that in mind and go read that article from Turf Tracks. But um, my top selection here in the Marcel Boussac, I'm going to take the three horse here, Rose Bloom. I'm going to go 3-9 in your forecast exacta. 3-9 forecast exacta. Top selection, three horse Rose Bloom. Two are by Lupe de Vega. Nicolas Clement trains. Stefan Pasquier gets the mount. He's facing group one quality and group quality horses for the first time. Most recently on the conditions race of Shanti, 9th of September, a mile in a conditions race. A very firm ground. The horse went by two lengths and absolutely loved it. Speed from the inside. He really took off clear. That was an exciting run. It's run very well. Has some speed. He should like the, the, the fast going. It's quite fast for that final two furlongs here at, Doville, at uh, Longchamp 
today. I think he's sitting on a very good run, even with the class uh, upgrade. Two back in a main race at Deauville, 7th from 17th of August. He won by length that day, and it took him a little bit of time to get going, but he got the job done. It was a good economy kind of victory. Not not flashy, but he, he got the, the winning check. You know, coming here third start by the Lupe de Vega, who's a great miler. Um, you know, the, the offsprings have been really getting the mile trip quite nicely. I think this horse could really run a good one and win. I think the nine horse opera singer for Ryan Moore and you know, Aiden O'Brien's a likeliest winner also. Most recently at the end of August at um uh, at the Cura in a uh, group three, uh, she, he finished, um, he, he won by neck that day and he really put on a show going away with it that day. Prior to that, in a conditions race over the Cura, uh, over the seven at the Cura, he finished second by a head and he just missed late, but he was gaining well. And then a Leopardstown in a mile, uh, uh, main race, he won by one half lengths and he stayed the trip well. Then again, that day gets good inside post track, has proven he can run on fast ground. I think this is the O'Brien's best chance to get a victor on, uh, this long shot program. I'll use this horse on the the ticket, but to recount my selection for the second from Longchamp, it's a group one pre Marcel Boussac. Gonna take the three horse Rose Bloom, give kudos to the nine horse opera singer. Th um, three nine forecast exactly using both in the multi race. Let's get to the featured fourth race now from Longchamp, which is the group one pre de Arc de Triomphe. It's a group one event going for a purse of just over 1.3 million dollars. Uh, or excuse me, 5.3 million dollars. Did I say 1.3? I, I, I should have said 5.3 million dollars. Can't even remember what I said. Race for three year olds. And upwards, we have a field of 15 horses contesting the 2,400 meters or a mile and a half over the Longchamp turf course. My top selection in this year's arc, I love the 12 horse Feed the Flame. I'm going to go 12-6 in your forecast exacta. 12-6 forecast exacta. Top selection 12 horse. Feed the Flame. This 3 year colt by Kingman. Pascal Batty trains this one. Christophe Sumion gets the mount. When I think of Kingman, I don't really think about uh, a mile and a half horse. I think about milers, but uh, I think this horse could stay the uh, the mile and a half, and he's proven he could stay the mile and a half. He, he won two back here locally, but most recently in the local prep race uh, for the two for the three-year-olds for this one in the group two pre uh over the mile and a half here on the 10th of September, he finished second by one and a half lengths that day, and he was just off a little bit of a refreshing of about eight weeks, which he just wasn't 100% cranked that day. He stalked. It took him a little bit time to get going late he stayed the trip well but he needed something more i think he's going to be a lot fresher coming to this race today gets a better inside post draw and i think you know with the fast ground he goes up a lot and i think he's sitting on that very good run too back he ran terrifically on bastille day 14th of july a mile and a half in the group one pre to patty he won by length that day and he was all out he had a little bit of a wide post draw but he sent to the front end and he went away with it that was a very good run for him there uh you know before that he was just not comfortable at uh, Shunti over the mile in five sixteenths in the Group One Prix de Jockey Club. He finished fourth by six and a quarter lengths that day. Ace Impact really ran a terrific race on the front end. This horse just kind of stalked him and never, you know, never really quickened up. And uh, I, I just don't think he liked the the tight bends there at, uh, at, at Shunti. And then back here on the in late um, April, mile three and conditions race. First time facing winners, he won by one and a quarter lengths and he took off clear. He loves this course. His only defeat on this course was last time out in the Prix Niel where he just needed the race off the eight week refreshing. But other than that, he likes this course. He's drawn well. He likes fast ground. I think he's sitting on a very good run at 7-1. I'm going to use him. Um, I, I think your second likeliest winner here is the number six horse, Westover, for Ralph Beckett and Rob Hornby. Most recently, they ran the horse over the uh, in the King George or Alaska, where he finished second by a head by him. Hakum was just you know who won that day. He's running back in this one today. And this horse just couldn't keep up late. Hakum was just Game the horse out and, and got the head in front. But that, you know, a very exciting race. This horse kept up with him. He ran terrifically. If he had a better poster, he probably would have won, but nothing bad about that race there. Prior to that, in the Grand Prix de Saint Cloud, at Saint Cloud over the mile and a half, he won by two lengths that day. And on the front end, he basically walked home. A very easy race. And then the Coronation Cup at Epsom. He needed the race. Emily Upjohn upset at him that day. He just never quickened up. Emily Upjohn really, you know, took off clear. And the Shahima Classic at uh, Maidan, you know, equal best horse probably in the world by rating standpoint took off clear this horse just wasn't getting into him that day but you know has some speed is drawn well wouldn't surprise me if this horse steals it here at 6-1. I'll definitely use him on the ticket. Just looking over some other horses here, I, I you know, a, a horse that could be a possible upset here, I, you know, at a price. I like Winesto here, actually, for Maxime Guillon. Um, he's going to have to really find his winning ways. Hasn't won since the uh, Grand Prix de Patia of 2022, and since then, he's been facing tough horses, but he's proven he likes this course. Even in defeat, his most recent races here haven't been half bad. I think going back to a mile, uh, half should suit him well, and also fast 
scrunches in well at a price of 30 to 1 he's my price playing the shooter's arc you know bay bridge um he, he is stepping up in some class also he, he did get a good confidence builder in the september sticks to kempton last time out um you know at 12 to 1 i would keep an eye on him um you know and also you know you watch out for the the, the nine horse through the seven seas from japan you know you always have to watch out for the you know one these years the japanese horses are going to win they're going to win this race it's just a matter of when probably by the end of the decade they will they've been targeting this race for many years this horse's races in uh, japan haven't been half bad at all he's proven he can run you know i would give a shot to this mare here and you know uh, uh, also um you know you want to watch out for the uh, german bred fantastic moon um you know won the premiel quite nicely last time out the races in germany aren't half bad he you know he's got to overcome wide postra but 10 to 1 Watch out for him. I would use these horses in exact forecast combination and some multi race wagers, but it's a, it's a very exciting uh, arc this year. But to recap my selections now for the fourth from Patty Longchamp, it's to group one, Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. As a top selection, I'm going to take the 12 horse here, Feed the Flame. Give kudos to the six horse Westover. 12 6 forecast exacta. That's my top two. My price plays in this race, I would use a three horse Winesto. Also keep an eye on for Bay Bridge and, uh, you know, Fantastic Moon at 10 to 1 and uh, the 14 horse and even the nine horse uh, through the seven seas. Those all horses, I, it wouldn't surprise me if they, they win. But, uh, you know, Winesto and and, uh, you know, Fantastic Moon, those two horses, I'm definitely going to use them in some exact forecast combinations. But uh, now we're going to head over to race number five now from Longchamp. The fifth race from Longchamp, it's to Group 1, Prix de la Opera. It's a Group 1 event going for a purse, $531,000. Race for three-year-old fillies and mares uh, here. Three-year-olds and upwards, fillies and mares only. Field 12 horses going 2,000 meters or a mile and a quarter on the turf course. I'm going to take the 12 horse here, um, Blue Rosen. I'm going to go 12-6 in your forecast exact. Uh, same uh, selection as I gave you for the uh, the arc here, 12-6. Top selection, 12 horse, uh, Blue Rosen. Three-year-old fillie by Churchill. Arlene Lemaitre gets on this one for head. But the horse's most recent outing came in the Group 1 Pre-Verme at Longchamp, mile and a half on the 10th of September. They were seeing, can this horse stay the mile and a half? She didn't. She finished fifth by two lengths that day. She had a wide post, and she just never really got going. Refreshing back to a mile and is a preferred trip. Gets a good inside post, or has some forwardly pace. She's in a better spot to win. She, like I said, she's just never really getting into it. She saw very f soft ground at Goodwin on 3rd of August. A mile quarter in the group one Nassau stakes. It's even going into that race. She was the second coming of Christ. Uh, everybody picking her that day. And she just didn't run. She finished fourth by one quarter lengths at 90 cents a dollar. She just never really got going. Uh, the winner that day, uh, Ahosin, who's uh, running back this one, uh, really stayed the trip well in the demanding ground and came back to run horribly in the Yorkshire Oaks after that. This horse, you know, she just wasn't doing the the trip there. Uh, but before that, she ran terrifically from the rail in the pre de Diane at Shunti over the mile and a quarter. Winning by four lengths, she took the shortest way around and she really went off clear. Very nice strong run. You know, before that and her um, Pulishes, the French Thousand Guineas locally over the mile, she won by one three quarter lengths again in inside posture. She stayed the trip well and then she won the Pre de Grote on this turf course and then she won on this fixture last year in the Marcel Boussac. You know, if you just take off her last two victors, uh, you know, her last two races were just a little bit subpar but she's come back to a fast ground which she should like. She's come back to the distance that she wants in a mile and a quarter. And, you know, and she gets a good inside poster again, which she absolutely loves. I, I expect her to run a good race. At 3-1, to one, I'm going to use her. The six-horse Jana Rose wouldn't surprise me if this horse gets a good trip to win for Christophe Sumion. Uh, most recently, in the pre alec head at uh, Deauville over the mile and a quarter at the end of August, he, finished, he won by a head that day, and it was a good confidence builder taking her down in class. She, you know, she settled well towards the front of the pack. She quickened up. I thought she maybe won a little bit longer, but she got the job then quite nicely prior to then the Brigitte Diane over the mile quarter at Chanty she didn't she had the complete opposite trip that Blue Rose Sen had she had a wide trip around the tight ends which caused her she never really got going there and then the Prix Saint Laurent over the mile quarter here locally she went by three quarters length even with the wide trip she liked the big long sweeping turns here and she really took off clear and then she won here over the mile eighth in April quite nicely in that group three um Darby prep race or Oaks prep race she likes the bigger track. She doesn't like the tighter turns of Deauville or even uh, Shunti, which is even tighter. Coming here is going to have to recover wide poster from the 12 barrier, but, um, you know, I, was, I wouldn't be surprised she wins. I'm going to use her on the ticket. But to recap my selections now for the fifth from Patty Longchamp, it's the group one, Prix de l'Opera. I'm going to take the 12 horse 
uh, Blue Rose Sen. Give kudos to the six horse John Rose. 12 6 Exacta. Use them both in the multi race. The sixth event from Patty Longchamp. It's to Group 1 Prix de Alibi de Longchamp. It's a Group 1 event going for $371,500 purse. Race for two year olds and upwards. Very unusual for us here stateside to have a race that's for two year olds and upwards, but you know that's here stateside in Europe's quite you know they do it quite often as this time of year uh, for these kind of races uh, but we have 19 horses going over the thousand meter journey or flying the five furlongs here at Longshot probably the toughest one of the toughest courses in the world I think you need to have stamina to go down this course I'm going to take the 16 horse here get ahead I'm going to go 16-5 in your forecast exacta 16-5 forecast exacta top selection 16 horse get ahead 4 year field by showcasing Clive Cox trains Richard King's coat gets the mounts one of my dad's favorite thing was always betting the Philly and the big grade one um, sprint races here in the States. Um, you know, he had, who won, he was at Belmont for that 1990 Brewers Cup sprint where I, I believe the Philly won or she just missed. Uh, and then he had extra heat also, I think, finished second in the Brewers Cup sprint behind Squirtle Squirt in like 2002 uh, or 2001 at Belmont. But my dad's, like I said, dad's favorite thing was betting the Philly in these kind of group one or grade one sprint races. So I'm going to go, you know, with his uh, trait here and take the 16 horse get ahead for by showcasing Richard King. So it likes to get some out most recently in the flying five at the Kerr over the five furlongs 10th of September, the horse finished second by a half a length and he was flying home late. She just missed, but she ran her hard that, that day. Major improvement off the race before, which was the ninth rope where the horse needed the race over the five at York. She finished eighth by three and a half lengths that day. And she never really got going from the outside post draw. Uh, and then I, uh, sand down and the coral charge she finished six by two and three quarter lengths that day and again she just never really got going but they were going quite slow with that five furlongs there her races here in france weren't bad at all she actually ran in the pre gross chani at chanty over the five on the fourth of june where she had a decent second place finish by a nose that day she was really gaining late she was a little bit forwardly paced not a bad race after all said and done and then she went over at haydock quite nicely in may in a conditions race you know, she's been, if you look at some of the horses she's been facing, they've been, you know, the best of the division coming here today, getting good post draw. It wouldn't surprise me if she has the speed to win here. I think the five horse here, equilateral for Jamie Spencer and Charlie Hills, it wouldn't surprise me if this horse finds his winning ways. He finally found it in quite a few seasons last time out in a handicap at York over the five, winning by a neck that day drawn on the stat side and he was on the under the drive and excelling and he got the job done a very good race for the old man that day prior to in the king george qatar at goodwood over the five he finished 11 by nine and a half lengths that day and he just weakened under the drive very weird run he should have did a lot better than he did uh and then he showed potential in the king stand he finished fifth by four and a quarter lengths and he didn't completely crumble that day but he didn't completely quicken up either he was staying the trip decently and then he showed promise at, at an illicit race at haydock and then the temple stakes he showed promise with that place there um uh, I, you know, he's been running these good races. He finally got that victory again last time out. And, uh, you know, at, at this eight-year-old gelding at 15 to one, it wouldn't surprise me if he shows up here today. I'm going to use him on the ticket. Watch out for him as an upsetter. But to recount my selection for the 16 from Patty Longchamp or the sixth from Patty Longchamp, it's the Group One Brida Alaba de Longchamp. Going to take the 16 horse, get ahead. Give kudos to the five horse equilateral. 16 five forecast exacta. Use them both in your multi race. Let's get to the seventh race, the final graded or group race of the afternoon. Afternoon from Longchamp, it's the Group One Prix de la Forêt. It's a Group One event going for a purse of three hundred seventy-one thousand five hundred dollars. Race for three olds and upwards. Fourteen horses are going fourteen hundred meters or seven furlongs on the turf course. I'm gonna go with the one horse Ken Ross. Let's go one eight in your forecast exacta. I know it's a bit of a chalky exacta, but one eight forecast exacta. Top selection one horse Ken Ross. This um, six row uh, gelding by uh, Kingman here. Ralph Beckett trains. Frankie de Tori gets the mount. Again, I do not think Frankie's retiring at the end of the season I, I could i could just see it now in a month's time him saying you know what? I'm, I'm gonna go a one for one more year uh but we'll, we'll see <laughs> but um, that, that might be i can't be the only person that thinks that but um it, 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 ken ross his most recent outing came 26th of august at york seven frongs in the group two city of york stakes and he won by three cores length that day he absolutely likes that course at york and he had a dream trip from a tracking trip he went away with it not a bad race at all he gets a good inside poster here today could be forwardly paced I expect him to run a good race here today. Two back at Goodwood, seven furlongs in the group two Lennox Stakes. He won by a neck that day, and he had to be used a lot that day, but he settled well, he quickened up, and he got the job done. A major improvement off the race before, which is the July Cup at Newmarket, where he finished third by one three quarter lengths. And, you know, you either handle that final furlong at Newmarket on the July course, or you don't. He wasn't handling it there, and, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, it just really couldn't go 
get going there. Uh, and, and then prior to that, in the um, in the Jubilee, he finished seven by five lengths there, and uh, you know he, he needed the race first off the bench. You know he, he, he and uh, I thought he ran a terrific race in last year's uh, British Cup Mile, but he was just running the parking lot thirteen or fourteen. He didn't get so uh, a good trip out of the gate. He was in the parking lot around all, both bends, but for him to finish third that day, I thought that was a spectacular run. Hopefully, if he goes to this year's Brewers Cup Mile at uh, Santa Anita, he gets a good post, because I think he could be a serious, serious threat in that race. I'm going to use his horse on the ticket here, 2-1. to one. A bit of an upsetter could be the 8 horse you, sh- you should have um, should have been uh, airing here. Um, most recently, over the uh, in the Group 1 uh, Sprint Cup at Haydock over the 6, he finished second by a neck that day, and he, you know, he, he needed something more that day, but he got around the race course well. You know, again, he wanted something more at Newmarket, uh, and then in the hack when he just didn't like the very soft ground, but this horse goes up a lot with fast ground. I think he's been crying out for the extra furlong, gets a good inside post drop. It wouldn't surprise me at 15 one upset here, but I think Kate Ross is a very, very nice horse and a very you know, you know, a horse you want to keep an eye on as the season goes on, or as the end of the season comes up, uh, because, like I said, I think he, if he gets good, if he gets a good trip here today and wins, and if he goes to the Brewers Cup of Santina and gets a good post, I think he could be a very likely winner there also. But uh, I can't wait for this one. So I'm, I'm excited for this. But to recount my selection for the seven from Longchamp, it's Group One, Pretty La Foray. Going to take the one horse, Ken Ross. Give kudos to the eight horse. You should have been uh, airing um, one eight forecast exacta. Using both in the multi race. With that being said, good luck to all. Follow. Follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Kit 5 for more selections for race courses around the world. Good luck, everybody.